There it is. That's supposed to be oil. All right, we got a problem today on a Yamaha 300. This is on my Parker 23. Lower unit's acting up. Hit something and it's making some noise. Sounds like some gears or something. I took the lower screen off the side here. That's where you get to your bottom part of your foot oil. And I drained my foot oil a little bit and had a little bit of water, but looked like it was mixed with the water. So we're gonna take this foot off, see what's going on with it. So to take it off, there's a little rubber cover. Pop the cover off. And it holds this anode and trim tab on. So we pull that off. Then six, three bolts on this side, three bolts on the other. And pop these four bolts off and pull this impeller off. These things are a pain to get out sometimes. There she is. Yeah, they're pretty tight to fit in there. You don't want them coming out. So we're gonna take this little cover off that holds your shifting seals in. Take this cover off. Okay. So here's one of your seals that actually you have a seal back to back you got two different seals that you have to change here go around this shaft that holds that gear lube in place if you get any water it could be from this seal here which we're going to play, replace as well we're going to also look at some of the stuff on the prop but a seal back to back that we're going to replace so two of them here and one of them here and uh we're going to see what the inside still looks like we're going to take it all apart yeah this piece here I'm probably going to end up destroying it, taking it off. All right, I'm just going to put some pictures up on the screen. You can pause it and take a gander at it. But this is the manual that I'm following for the lower unit rebuild. It's got a pretty good bit of detail in it, as it should. But use it as you need to, and I'll tell you what kind of tools I'll need to do the job. Some of the stuff I didn't have to buy. All right, so I'm going to skip a little bit ahead. I had to do some figuring. This damn piece that sits up in here, I had to just chew it up to get it out. 
just chiseled it out pretty much till it started coming up. This here had Yeah, this nothing went around it. I bought the tool, but I guess it's the wrong damn tool. I guess it's for a 350. It says F300 to 350, but it ain't quite right. Anyway, I'm supposed to be able to take this off. Well, I just got a punch and drove it around. This wasn't too tight on there. So the bottom nut, the one that is flying here, I got the tool to take this off with. And I got my big impact and I've been trying to take it, but this thing is, uh, it moved a little bit, but then it just stopped and kind of froze up and I can't do nothing. Try to put big pipe wrenches on it, turning it manually and turning it while I have the big impact hitting it. And this thing is seized up. <laughs> Yep, it does have the keyway at the bottom. So if you drill toward the bottom of that nut, it should be all right. I drilled two holes and then started walking the bit. I was able to break it like that, so that's what we want. Now the little lock and tab ring comes out. Now we can get ready to pull this, pull this uh, bearing carrier out, take a look at it, and then see what's behind it. she is looks like about three shims all right at this point if you're following along at home and you're using the manual you'll see that it tells you to use a pinion gear uh, nut tool well you can just stick a breaker bar with a socket on a shallow well socket up there and hold that nut while you loosen it from the top on that drive shaft you're gonna have to use a the uh, spline holder tool which I'll link and uh, once you loosen that nut with that drive shaft, that pinion gear will fall right down, and then you'll be able to pull that forward gear out. All right, got all my new parts laid out for my foot here, going in with new bearings on everything. Now, some of them were kind of tricky to get in. This one here has to be pressed on. A couple of these just slip in. One in here. You have to heat up certain parts. If you get the manual, it tells you how to put new bearings in everything heat them up and slide them in. I used the bushing driver tool. This will come off of Amazon. It worked pretty good. Now there's one bushing that give you a little trouble or one bearing. The main bearing for the drive shaft. Just use a piece of this to drive it in. Just press it in. Make sure it's even but you got to heat both sides up here where it goes with a torch before you put it in. But to get a couple bearings out, I use the the uh, bushing or bearing splitter or the bearing puller tool and then the bushing driver to put them in. But we're about to go in with some new parts. All right, let's get ready to install the forward gear. Got to make sure that the dowel lines up with the hole in the back. All 
All right, after you put this gear in, you gotta put the drive shaft in from the top and you'll see that spline sticking down. You wanna put this pinion gear on um, while it's halfway through, kind of feed it down, start putting it on and then get it in place. All right, I have my shims in place. Now time for my prop shaft to go in along with my reverse gear. All right, I have my gear in place here, my reverse gear on the bearing carrier housing. I'm gonna slip all of it in at once and be sure to put your, your uh, keyway back in. New O-ring. And I'm gonna grease where the maintenance surface goes in. And we'll slide it all back together as an assembly here. Marine grease on everything, threads and everything where my keyway is here. So if I have to take it apart again, it won't give me so much trouble. Okay, I have it all ready to go as an assembly here. We're gonna stick it all in. Hopefully the O-ring and everything stays where it needs to stay. This big washer here pretty much is uh you kind of just sliding in place so it might give us some trouble getting it all lined up but that should be the only issue going back in we don't want that to move Now I'm going to drop my shift shaft in from the top, line it up with that fork. Okay, we'll install this key. Keep that bearing assembly from spinning. Alignment washer back on. Now that you have the lock washer, I guess you can call it, we'll put the nut spline nut back on and it'll draw everything together. Now you can get this backwards to make sure the side with the spline is flush with the outside. Tighten it up to 114 foot pounds. There we go. Got that tightened. Now we're going to bend one of the tabs on that washer with the lock tabs. And uh, that'll be complete. No back and forth movement on my prop shaft. That's good. It just drawed everything together when you tighten it.
There we go. Now I'm gonna put the seals back in the top. Get all that put back together. We'll put this thing, fill this thing up with some oil. All right, take a look at this mess. <laughs> so this plate here gets an O-ring on the outside. It gets two seals that point up. They get sandwiched together on each side going down. Then this whole plate slips into place. This one here, make sure the tabs are left and right of the engine. It gets an O-ring all the way around it and the seal goes down, facing down with the cup open. But these two go in, these two go back together fairly easy. Just wanna make sure all your maintenance services are cleaned up. I put a good bit of grease on everything just cause this holds some salt water and it's just pro prone to corrosion. So I do this with my engines going back on to maybe ha help them out just a little bit longer. But I'm ready to tighten these two bolts up here and then put the impeller housing and all that back on. And then the last thing, we'll fill it with oil. All right, so we have a completed foot all back together. I skipped the part up top to where we put the impeller housing and all that back together. There's a lot of videos out there on that, I would believe. But we'll have oil in it and she's sitting fine. And we're gonna put on the back, put her back on the boat, and test her out for too long. I had to get a new, new cover on both sides. But other than that, she's ready to go back and get us back offshore and go to the fishing grounds. I, it's about time. I'm sick of working on stuff and ready to start fishing again. But this job was kind of a pain in the ass, but check your seals, check your oil every now and then, every three, four trips if you're worried about it, but um, when they get low on oil, your bearings corrode on you. And what happened to mine was, let me show you here. The top bearing, I guess, went really, really low without oil. And on the drive shaft where the bearing is, the two bearings are, it got hot, welded the bearing to the shaft itself and caused the shaft to split. So that's what can happen if you get water introduced in there and it doesn't get cooled properly. So we try to avoid that on the next one.